I'm Rowena, I'm from the product documentation team at Scaleway and today I'm going to present to you the Scaleway object storage solution. I'll be showing you how to use object storage from the Scaleway console, um, presenting some of its main features and we'll look at a couple of different use cases. But first let's answer the question what is object storage anyway? So object storage is a storage service based on Amazon's S3 protocol. It can be used to store all sorts of file uh, images, videos, documents, and more. When they're stored with object storage, your files become accessible anywhere at any time. They're not tied to one single computer or disk. And object storage provides you with infinite storage. It's also highly redundant. So because your files aren't on one single disk, um, they're backed up, they're in the cloud. And it's a pay-as-you-use service. You're not tied into a fixed monthly fee. You simply pay for what you consume. I mentioned use cases. I'll be presenting two today. The first will be a simple use case for file storage and sharing uh, controlled by the uh, Scaleway console. And the second about setting up a bucket website with object storage. Um, in both these use cases, we're going to see some of the different features of object storage. But I'll just briefly go over those features now. We'll see the two different classes uh, of storage, standard and Glacier. We'll look at bucket visibility, bucket versioning, which allows you to host different versions of the same file in your buckets. Bucket metrics, so uh, usage statistics essentially. Bucket website to host a static website on your bucket. And lifecycle rules to control some automatic actions um, to be applied to objects in your bucket. So let's get stuck into the first use case, uh, file storage and sharing with the uh, Scaleway console. So we're going to go to the Scaleway console, console.scaleway.com. I'm already logged into my account and I'm at the top level of my account, um, which is my organization, which is called Marie Curie. Now every organization has at least one project called default. You can just stick with this single project and create all your resources here, or you can create more projects um, to help you group your Scaleway resources in different ways. I'm going to create a new project for the purpose of this demonstration, which I'll call Marie Curie Bucket Project. Create that. And just to show you a little more clearly what happened there, we'll go back to the page we were at before, back to the Projects tab, and we can see that in addition to our default project, there's now this second project, which I will click into. And we will create our object storage resources here. So on the left side menu, I'll choose object storage. And I'm prompted to create a bucket. You'll hear this word bucket a lot with object storage. Um, basically, with object storage, we don't talk about files and directories. We talk about objects and buckets. So you can think of a bucket as being like a directory or a folder for your files. So we'll click to create a bucket. And the creation wizard will guide us through every step of that process. First, we need to give the bucket a name. It must be unique um, between all Scaleway hosted buckets. Um, I'm going to call it uh, Marie Curie uh, Bucket Demo. Um, we are going to choose a region, so I will leave it at Paris. This is just the geographical location in which Scaleway hosts your bucket. Set your bucket visibility. Um, this we will look at in more detail in just a moment. For now, we're going to leave it at private. We'll see what uh, effect it has if you change it to public later. And finally, we have the estimated cost calculator down here. So we can see the first 75 gigabytes of storage are free and the first 75 gigabytes of outgoing transfer are also free. You're only going to pay for what you consume above that. So if, for example, we think we might store 100 gigabytes for one month, we can put in those settings and get an estimated cost down here. But this is just a calculator, just a tool for your benefit. Um, changing these figures doesn't tie you into anything. It doesn't affect anything. So we can click create a bucket. And we can see that our bucket is being created. Here it is, Marie Curie Bucket Demo. So let's click into that. And as expected, the bucket is empty. We want to upload some files. So we simply click here. 
and choose the files we want to upload. So from my local machine, I'm going to pick this report and this image. It asks me to choose a storage class. So we have two classes, Standard and Glacier. Glacier is five times cheaper than Standard, but files are slower to be accessed from Glacier. So it's more suitable for files that you need to access less regularly um, or that you want to put in long-term storage, like maybe for backups. We're going to stick with Standard for now. We'll validate the storage class and we can see our two files are now in the bucket. There's lots of different ways you can get your files um, back out of the bucket, access your files. This little button here, will allow you to open the file and download it back onto your local computer. So we can see it's downloaded the PDF report into our browser. But what if you wanted to give access to that file to someone who doesn't uh, have access to your Scaleway console? Very easy as well. We simply click on these three dots next to the file, get public link, we choose how long we want this link to be valid for. Um, I'm going to leave it at default so the link will expire in one hour. Generate link. And we get this temporary public file link, which I'm going to copy with the button here. And we can put that into a browser and access the report. So obviously you could now send this link to anyone at all and for the next hour they will be able to view and access your uh, PDF report which you've stored in your bucket. There's lots of other ways you can control access to your bucket and the files within it as well. We're going to go to bucket settings here back in the console and we're going to look at this bucket visibility feature. So here we can see that the visibility of our bucket is set to private. We chose this when we were creating our bucket. This means that if we go to our bucket endpoint, which I'll copy here, this is our bucket's URL essentially, we'll put that URL of our bucket into the browser and we get this XML message saying access denied. This is what happens when you set your bucket visibility to private, that access denied message. If we change that to public, bucket access updated successfully and we go back to the bucket's endpoint. Now we can see some information about the bucket. Notably, we can see uh, the contents. So we can see the report that's in there and the Scaleway image PNG that's in there as well. So changing our bucket's visibility from private to public means that at the bucket endpoint, people can see the list of files or objects stored within the bucket. This doesn't mean they can access the objects themselves. So let's go back to files. And if we look at this image here, for example, scalewayimage.png, I'm going to copy that name, go back to the bucket endpoint, slash the file name, and what happens? We get this access denied message. And that is because, back to the console, if we look at the visibility of this image file, by clicking on these three dots next to it and looking at visibility, we can see it's set to private. If we change this to public and update, object visibility has been successfully modified. We'll refresh that bucket endpoint with the image at the end of it. And now, because we've changed the object visibility to public, we can see the image. So I think you can start to see um, some of the more fine-grained ways that you can share uh, objects within your bucket and control who has access to what. We'll just briefly go through some of the other features here. Um, so back in the bucket settings tab, um, you can use tags to help you organize your buckets. Um, you can use bucket versioning to keep multiple variants of an object in the same bucket. Uh, the bucket website feature we're going to come back to in a moment. In lifecycle rules, we have a handy wizard to enable you to create uh, rules to define actions to apply to your objects. For example, you could set a rule that says after a certain amount of time, um, all objects fulfilling a certain criteria um, become transferred from standard class to Glacier class. And in the metrics tab, this provides you some nice graphs and statistics about the number of objects, the storage usage and the bandwidth out of your bucket. Obviously, there's not much here for us right now because we literally just created our bucket. But over time, um, we'd have some nice information here. 
Okay, so that's the end of our first use case on file storage and sharing. Let's have a look at our second use case, which is for the bucket website feature. This allows you to uh, host a static website right from your Scaleway object storage bucket. So let's go back to the console. And we're going to go back to the object storage tab here in the left side menu. We can see our existing bucket that we just created. And for our bucket website, we're going to create a new one. We'll call this um, bucket website uh, demo bucket. We're going to create it in the Paris region. We'll set the bucket visibility to public this time since it's for a website and create the bucket. So now our bucket website demo bucket has appeared up here. So we have a list of both of our buckets. I'm going to go into this one I just created. It's empty, of course. So let's add the files we need for our website. Now my website that I'm going to be creating is a very simple one page static website. I'm going to select these four files here. And it asks me to validate the storage class. I'll stick with standard. And we've uploaded these four files, uh, an error file, an index file, an image file, and a style sheet. So <clears throat> I'm going to go to bucket settings and look at this bucket website feature. So we've uploaded the files we need for our website. It's really easy to now enable the bucket website feature. I'm going to click here, slide this to enabled. It asks me for two pieces of information, the index file name. So I've already uploaded this and I've called it index.html and the error file name, which I've also uploaded and I called error.html. We'll save that configuration. And we see down here, we now have in the bucket website panel, this website URL, which we can click. And this is our website. So this is the simple one page blog website that we uh, created based on our index file, our image, etc. This is obviously extremely simple, but you can use the static the bucket website feature to create much more complex and rich static websites according to your own needs. Uh, if we go back to the console, we're just going to finish off by seeing how we can delete a bucket. So we're going to use the delete bucket button down here. We'll type delete to confirm that we understand that all the files in the bucket will be lost. Okay. Bucket has been deleted successfully and that bucket website um, bucket has now disappeared from our list of buckets. So if we try to go back to that website URL, uh, it's this one. No such bucket. The specified bucket does not delete does not exist because we deleted it. So those were two use cases for using object storage from the Scaleway console. You can, of course, go a lot further with object storage. Uh, you can use it to store your Veeam backups. You can use it with Atempo Miria. Um, and everything that we've seen today from the console can also be achieved from the command line. There's a lot of information about these use cases and about using object storage from the command line at the Scaleway documentation website, which we'll just take a brief look at. So scaleway.com slash docs. Here's our documentation website. Um, with the search bar up here, we can search for, for example, Veeam. We'll find this tutorial using Veeam backup and replication with object storage. And it takes you step by step through how to use object storage for this purpose. Here in related tutorials, we can see lots more that you can do with object storage. Um, I mentioned a tempo Miria. So we can see here the tutorial for using that one, as well as more related tutorials here on the side. And in terms of um, using object storage from the command line, let's just go back to our documentation homepage, storage, object storage, and you'll see there's this API CLI section. Uh, Scaleway object storage is compatible with the AWS CLI, as well as a lot of other um, S3 command line tools, including Minio client, uh, S3 CMD, uh, R clone, and a lot more. And to find out more about using object storage from these command line tools, it's all documented here. 
So that was Scaleway Object Storage, a brief presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to check out our documentation website and of course to go to console.scaleway.com to get started with your own web object storage use case. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.